Hey everyone, this is Justin from Who Is Like You Ministries and welcome back to another video. This week I'm doing a video on the Akedah, also known as the Binding of Isaac, and its many parallels to the crucifixion of Jesus. Now I do want to say up front that I'm not going to be addressing arguments on if Abraham was tested or not, and I'm also not going to be discussing the question of why would a loving God tell Abraham to kill his son. Those are topics for different videos and this one is just solely about the parallel between the binding of Isaac and the death of Jesus. So before I get into discussing the parallels, it's important to know the story of the binding of Isaac and what happened. The Akedah is a story from Genesis chapter 22 and is about the test that God placed on Abraham. And the story begins after Abraham had lived many days in the land of the Philistines. That can be found in Genesis 21:34. One day, God spoke to Abraham and said, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. This was meant to be a test for Abraham, evidenced by the word nasa in verse 1, meaning to test. The next morning, after hearing God's word, Abraham, Isaac, and two of his na'ar took wood to the place that God told him to go. The word na'ar is important here because it means a youth who is around 17 years old. So, Isaac and two 17-year-olds went with Abraham to the mountain. When they arrived, Abraham told the two youths to wait while he and Isaac went up the mountain to worship. Abraham then gave the wood for a burnt offering to Isaac to carry up the mountain. Along the way, Isaac questioned his father as to where the burnt offering was, and Abraham responded that God would provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. When they had arrived at the top of the mountain, Abraham built the altar and laid the wood onto it, preparing for a sacrifice. He then bound Isaac and laid him on top of the altar. Abraham, with his knife, reached out to sacrifice his son to God, but at the last moment, an angel stayed Abraham hand. The angel called down to Abraham and said, Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him, for now I know that you fear God, seeing that you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw a ram stuck in a thicket and offered it up instead of Isaac as a burnt offering. From that day on, that place was called The Lord Will Provide. Then the angel called a second time to Abraham, saying, By myself I have sworn, declares the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you, and I will surely multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of his enemies, and in your offspring shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. Abraham then returned to his youths, and they went back to Beersheba to dwell. It is very important to note that the word na'ar, meaning youth, about 17 years old, that was used for the servants that went with Abraham. Numerous Christians often picture Isaac as a small child when they read this story, mostly because of the translation of Genesis 22:5, where it is translated as boy or lad, depending on the translation referring to Isaac. I know that the English Standard Version says boy and the King James says lad. And the verse reads, Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. I and the boy will go over there and worship and come again to you. However, the Hebrew word translated as boy or lad in Genesis 22.5 is na'ar, the same word used for the male servants. Because of this, it is very likely that Isaac was around 17 years old himself. Some scholars say even older. Why is this important? It's important because this word lets us know that Isaac was not a young boy and could not have been forced to be sacrificed by his father. Abraham was an old man at this time and would not have been able to forcibly bind Isaac. Isaac could have easily run away if he wanted to. Also, Isaac, being a young man, probably could have guessed what was going to happen when Abraham did not have an animal to sacrifice, yet brought a knife up the mountain. This shows Isaac's willingness to sacrifice himself for his father, or would have willingly sacrificed himself if Abraham wasn't stopped. How does this parallel Jesus? In both instances, the son willingly sacrificed himself for his father. Isaac was willing to let Abraham kill him. He may have known it was a test or guessed it, but I can't say for sure. And Jesus descended to earth in human form to sacrifice himself for his father and all of mankind, or only the elect, depending on if you are Arminianist or Calvinist. It is also noteworthy 
that Abraham says that God will provide a lamb to be sacrificed and Jesus is the lamb of God. Furthermore, from this event, Abraham is believed to be the father of the Israelite priesthood and Jesus is a priestly messiah. Let's talk a little bit about the word na'ar. The word does mean youth, but it can also mean just a boy, anywhere between infant and young adult. There are a couple of ways that we can assume Isaac's age is an older boy. First, many lexicons like the BDB lexicon, which is one of the most renowned Hebrew lexicons, for example, says that the word na'ar in the context of Ishmael, Isaac, and Joseph means a youth who is 17 years old. And then another reason is that we could look at the fact that Abraham made Isaac carry the sticks up the mountain for the sacrifice. A child could not do that. These and various other reasons give evidence for the parallel between Jesus' crucifixion and Isaac's almost sacrifice. Thank you for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, then definitely leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more. And again, thank you all for watching watching and have a great day.